know, I just, you know, you go back and um, you know, start on offense. Just their, their movement and linebacker run-throughs, you know, really hurt us in the run game. Uh, something we worked on, but obviously not enough. We, we had a lot of gap schemes in the first half, down-around schemes in the first half. We felt like we could block and handle and struggled with it. We went to more zone schemes in the second half, and then uh, we just couldn't get anything going in the run game. Right now, Brian's the only guy that can win consistently outside for us. And, uh, obviously, they know that. Uh, so, uh, if we can't run it, we're going to struggle. And you look at three ball games, you look at Missouri, you look at Tennessee in the second half, and then you look at uh, the Appalachian State game. Those are the three games we struggled to run the football. So, uh, need to be more creative in the run game. Need to look at some different personnel groupings, uh, some different formations to get to the same runs that we've been very effective with this season. So, uh, that's kind of moving forward. That's what we've sort of settled in on the things we've got to be able to do because that's got to be part of what we do at this time. Defensively, we were solid. We were very good on third down. Our first and 10 efficiency was very good, up over 65%, which we were staying ahead of the chains. Uh, special teams disappointed with, obviously, the two kickoff returns. The uh, first one split us on our sideline, and the next one we didn't leverage it right. And uh, Their number 11 you know, outran us a little bit there. He's a, he's a 10, 200 meter. Uh, but you give up really 10 points on field position there, and then the dropped – uh, interception uh, for a, another score, 17 points of their 20 points. So, uh, this obviously just uh, extremely disappointed with that. But uh, injury wise, Feaster and uh, Ortre Smith and, and AJ Turner will be questionable this weekend. Uh, Brian Edwards and Chow Smith are good to go. They'll, they'll be ready to go this weekend in College Station. And I'll open up for any questions. Well, Dave, uh, you, you mentioned some uh, tweaks to the run game. Uh, how easy or difficult is it to try to teach your linemen and your backs, you know, uh, new formations, you know, in this short of a period? Well, for, you know, new formations and new personnel, it's, it's, if, if it's blocking the same run game, you know, it's that's not as hard. And so we've got to get to it some different ways and create some window dressing and do some different things to be to create more illusion for the defense and uh, continue to to. to do some things that we've been very effective with this year running the football against really good people. So, you know, we, we've got to just be more creative. Hey, well, this is Colin. I think you guys you had eight penalties last night, some in pretty critical moments, and I think you're one of 20 teams or 18 teams with 70 or more penalties. Is that concerning for you as a head coach? And what can you guys do to kind of limit those mental mistakes um, these last two games? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's certainly a concern. I mean, I think, Colin, we had three uh, situations where we just, we, you know, we're in no huddle. We've got to make sure everybody's set, uh, you know, especially in some of our empty sets when, when guys are spreading out to make sure they're set. And that's not, uh, you know, that's something that uh, we need to be able to handle, obviously. Uh, so, you know, we need to cut down on the penalties. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Self-inflicted wounds for us right now, especially offensively. You know, we're not as explosive as we need to be. Uh, so it's hard to make up the yard of the, you know, those hidden yards that you're losing in, in penalties. So there's no question it's a concern. Will, Dave, again, you, you mentioned the, uh, the special teams points there. Is Will Tommy just kind of uh, maybe wearing down through the course of the season? Is there somebody else you can put in there to get a touchback every time? Well, you know, Joseph Charlton's a guy that certainly can, you know, is a can, can put it out of the end zone. We just hate to strain his leg. But no, Will, Will's kicked well. The, the ball was a cold night. It was a dead night. It wasn't traveling well. That's why we, we didn't, I didn't attempt the field goal there on fourth down. It was on the 36 and a half. Uh, we did not hit anything inside the 35 or outside the 35 in pregame. You know, they wasn't traveling well for their kicker either. And uh, was really concerned about, you know, that, that down a distance. And obviously we had the coverage we wanted in the route. We just missed the read uh, on the fourth down play. But the ball wasn't traveling as well. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, you know, concerning. But the ball position on one of the kicks is not where it needs to be. If we get the ball uh, kicked where, where it's supposed to be, then it's, it's a little bit better for our coverage people. Well, this is Colin again. I don't think you mentioned Chavis Dawkins. Um, is Chavis going to be back this week? Colin, I'm sorry. I lost you. What did you say? Is it Chavis Dawkins, is he going to be expected to play? Yeah, he should be back, yeah. Hey, Will, this is Ben. After kind of going over the film and considering where the, the receiver situation is right now, how did you kind of grade out Ryan's play once you got a second look at it? Well, so we had seven drops. 
and mostly all at the receiver position. I think one one, one running back drop. So I thought he was accurate with the football. I mean, there's you know, a couple of reads he probably would like to have had back. Uh, but, but again, I think we've got to help Brian more around him as far as those things are concerned in the throwing game. And we've got to be able to convert some of those. Some of those, two of those were critical third downs. That we're staying on the field. We're staying on our first drive in the red zone. Uh, so we, we've got to just do a better job. Will so, Dave again, Josh. especially – go ahead, Josh. The, the amount of passes that you guys have thrown, the amount of attempts you've, attempts you've had this year, is that a function of having to come from behind sometimes? Or is that a yeah. function of, of what you wanted your offense to be or thought you wanted your offense to be at one point? Well, uh, you know, the landscape of our offense has completely changed from starting the year. So, no, that's a, a product of the situation of the game. It's a two-score game. It's an 11-point game. And, you know, we're in the fourth quarter, and we you know, felt like we needed to throw the football. We weren't having any success running it. So the con- the, 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 game, the, co- the complexity of the game changed. So we felt like we needed to throw it. We had no success running the football. So I, I'm sorry, that, forgive me. That, I that, that, that season. The number of that? attempts over the season is it kind of the same thing. Just sit, that, that's more yeah, situation. Yeah. Then I look at I look at game situation. We couldn't we couldn't run it against Missouri. You know, don't bang your head against the wall. It's trying to move the football. It's a two score game at that time. You look at Tennessee. I mean, we weren't running it well. I mean, so those are all games that you know the. the the scoreboard dictates a little bit about what, what you're trying to do in the game. We're trying to go win football games. And, you know, no situation. So, yeah, I mean, that's not necessarily what we want to do, but sometimes the, the scoreboard dictates how you got to play. You're meeting with – I know you meet with the offensive staff every Sunday. What was the tone of that meeting Sunday t- today, and, and how did you go about, you know, trying to help them? Well, we've got to do a better job schematically putting our guys in positions to be successful. You know, and we can talk about execution all we want. At the end of the day, if we're not executing properly, that goes back to coaching. And so that's on us. And we got to put our guys in better situations to be successful, whether it's in the run game, whether it's in protection, whether it's running around, whatever the case may be. Let's make sure we go back and review everything. We, we do this every Sunday, whether we win or we lose. <laughs> and we go back and, and ask ourselves from the standpoint, all right, are we doing too much? Are we asking this player to do too much? Or are we putting our guys in situations to be successful? What does our opponent evaluate off, off, based off what they see from us? I mean, those are all questions that we ask every Sunday. Uh, that we go through, and, and uh, you know, as far as those things are concerned, so we got to, you know, we got to be more creative in the run game. Uh, to look at some, like I said earlier, some different personnel, uh, uh, you know, different different looks and different personnel packages on the field, formationally getting some, some different things uh, to get to some of the runs that have been very efficient. Because you don't, you're not going to create a whole new run game at this point of the season. And we've been efficient against really good people this year running the football at times, and we've got to get back to that. Is that inconsistency as as frustrating as the is the fact that you've done it well make it more frustrating? Yeah. Oh, that's extremely frustrating. You're going into that ball game feeling like you're going to be able to run the football well, and we don't, and that's extremely frustrating. And you know, we kind of go back and evaluate each run, evaluate. All of the down around schemes, all the inside zone schemes, all of those schemes, we you know kind of trying to look at and what was the breakdown in those situations. And, uh, you know, there's multiple areas that we've got to continue to do a better job in, and that's and, you know, starts again with schematically putting our guys in a situation where they got a chance. Will Will Brian continue to call plays for you the rest of this season? Yes. Thanks, Will. Hey, Will. It's uh, Phil Cornblue. Uh, with the, the current climate in the college football with coaches being fired after 21 or 22 games in the case of Chad Morris, how do you feel about the support you have from the new president and from uh, Ray Tanner uh, looking at the you know, the possibility you may have a second straight losing season? Uh, do you feel like at this point uh, they are fully supportive of you regardless of what happens the rest of the way? Absolutely. Everybody's been very positive and supportive of what we need to do moving forward. And, and that's what, uh, you know, we're excited about, not about where we are, but where we're moving. And uh, we've made a lot of strides and a lot of progress. And uh, being, again, a program in the first three years of a staff, uh, won more games than anyone else has. And we've had some, some inconsistencies this year that have been frustrating, uh, but we're looking forward to battling out of it. 
Where will Dave again? Uh, look, uh, looking at the, the fourth quarter, you guys were able to get some uh, some consistency, maybe with Rico running a little bit downfield and getting the ball to him on a pass play. Was that more what App State's defense was doing at that time, or did things just open up then? Uh, what, why were you so successful then? In the passing game? Yeah. Just getting the ball to Rico. The they were running some Tampa too, and they were in, in the check down to the to the back is the is if you don't have the first read down the field, whatever the case may be, based on the route concept, uh, we were checking it down to the back, and he always had room between him and the backers. Willis is calling again. I guess have you talked to Ray Tanner at all since last night? And I guess if so, what was kind of the conversation like between you two? Nothing normal. I mean, I talked to him after the game. Nothing normal. I mean, always talk. Well, this is John. I, after last season, what was what was time to evaluate why there were so many injuries and, and what kind of adjustments did you make to, to help kind of decrease that going into this year? Well, we evaluate every year, John, as far as what we're doing in the off season program, and there were some adjustments made as far as you know we didn't have any soft tissue issues last year. We didn't have any. We had one guy, I think Jalen Dickerson missed time with a hamstring, and that was it for the entire season last year. So, um, you know, there wasn't anything from a training standpoint that we felt like we, you know, there were some tweaks and things, but, but overall changing things, we didn't have to change a lot of anything. There were some unusual situations that occurred last year as far as injuries are concerned, but none of them were soft tissue except for one, one individual player. So you feel like looking looking back on that, you're, you and your staff did a, a thorough enough job with with regard to kind of injury prevention going into this year. Yeah, going into the year, and then we're you know you're constantly evaluating. We've got the catapult system as far as the number of you know mileage that we're having during games, the number of mileage we have during practices. Uh, very comparable to people in our league that use a catapult system that we're able to access that information. So been very similar. Yeah. Um, Y'all, y'all currently have the most injuries of, of any team in the SEC right now. Can you pinpoint any reason for that? You know why why those problems kind of continue? I, I don't. How do you get that information? I, I did some research this afternoon. Oh, so everybody's putting an injury report like the NFL does. There's no way that can be accurate, John. We've had four season-ending surgeries. We've had Jake Bentley. We've had Devontae Davis. We've had Nick Muse when he has his knee surgery, which he hasn't had yet. We've had Josh Mann. Other than that, we've had some soft tissue issues. We've had four season-ending surgeries, which four to six on average is is the norm. So I don't know where you're getting this information from because no one in college football puts out an injury report. There are HIPAA laws in, in effect as well. So I don't know where you're getting this in, uh, information from. All right, thank you. That's it. Thanks, so. Thanks, Will. <laughs> 